Are you having a really hard time with four against three or three against four? Hey, I'm Lana with Pianable and I'm going to help you figure this out. Four against three is a polyrhythm found in a lot of piano music. Here's some examples. This slow movement of Beethoven's Pathetique Sonata has a few samples of four against three, such as here. Of course, this famous piece by Chopin, the Fantasy Impromptu, comprises of fast polyrhythms throughout. You can hear the triplets in the left hand with the right hand quadruplets over top. Back to Beethoven, the polyrhythms in his Moonlight Sonata are a little bit more disguised, as the right hand groups of four are actually dotted eighths with sixteenths. Debussy's Reverie has a few places where the right hand plays triplet quarter notes over four eighth notes in the left hand, such as there, or here. This example shows fast polyrhythms in the third movement of Beethoven's Opus 10 C minor sonata. Here he uses fast tremolo groups of four in the right hand over triplet eighths in the left. The best way to figure out any polyrhythm is to find the common denominator between both groups of notes. The common denominator of four and three is 12. So the next step is to write out those numbers. Keep in mind that you can do this for any polyrhythm, but you might need a long piece of paper for a pairing like four against five or seven against four. So using one beat of Chopin's Fantasy Impromptu as an example, there are four notes in the right hand, so we'll divide that number of notes into 12, which is three. Therefore, every three numbers, we draw a little mark above. For the left hand, we do the same. 12 divided by three notes is four, so every four numbers, we draw a mark. Sometimes I like to draw in the notes to help me visualize the music. So the next thing we do is count these numbers out loud while tapping with each hand. So I'm going to do the four in the right hand, and I'm going to do the three in the left hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We want to try and speed this up because right now it's pretty slow. So I do this gradually. See how fast you can do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12. Now it gets a little tricky, but at this point, your hands start to develop a little bit more of a flow. The rhythm starts to feel like something. And what happens is you start to, to feel the together, right, left, right, left, right. And there's a rhythm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Together, right, left, right, left, right. And then you can go faster with more ease. So if this is a little challenging for you, that's okay. Take your time uh, every day, just increase it a little bit or spend some more time with the numbers. Now there's an even better way of getting the hang of this rhythm and it is past the melting butter. When you're tapping really fast and you're saying the numbers super fast, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is a great time to transition into past the melting butter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, pass the melting butter. Pass the melting butter. Pass the melting butter. Pass comes together and then you have that same old rhythm, the melting butter. See, so it's a little bit more natural instead of saying 100 counts, 1,000 miles an hour. Bella, come here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Pass the melting butter. Please like and subscribe because I'd love to help you out with more of my tips and tutorials in the future. So there's another thing that you can do, which is a pretty standard trick, and that is to take a pencil and draw a line from the left-hand notes into the right-hand notes. Scores are often quite accurate with this, as you can see by looking at the diagram on the right. Watch me integrate the tools we just discussed. Pass the melting butter, please. Getting the hang of this is kind of like... I hope this really helped you out. 
Make sure to stay tuned for part two of this tutorial, where I'll show you practical tips on how to practice four against three, including one of the golden rules of practice. I'll also address common mistakes that are often made when attempting polyrhythms, so you can be aware of how to avoid them and ultimately improve execution and build your confidence. Good luck!